We know the ANC in the last few hours has released a statement uh, likening Israel to the Nazis, accusing it of, of turning the occupied territories of Palestine into permanent death camps. What is your take on that? I think just in terms of speaking on behalf of the South African Jewish community, we were appalled. We were absolutely shocked by this statement. I think to bring the Holocaust into a situation, into a conflict that was not wished for by Israel, whereby Israel exercised restraint for the last four weeks leading up to this, whereby Israel was bombarded with hundreds, and I mean hundreds of missiles aimed at the population, in fact half the population of Israel. Israel didn't want this fight. Benjamin Netanyahu sat there restrained, waiting, hoping and believing that uh, the, the Palestinians would calm down and not force his, his hand. Um, the fact of the matter is that they didn't. And he has an obligation to respond to the protection of his people. How could one ever blame someone from protecting their people? That is the obligation. Uh, ben, uh, l l let's face it, both sides in this conflict are hardened by now, given their history. What will it take for them to get back to the negotiating table and try to, try to see each other's point of view? Funny enough, I really like that question. The fact that the ANC has the audacity to issue a statement like it did yesterday helps no one in this conflict. Simply what they are saying, the Palestinians, you guys are right, Israel, you guys are wrong. So they're doing what, what the Arab League has done consistently for the last 70 years. Don't worry guys, we've got your back. As long as you don't negotiate and settle the issue with Israel, we'll look after you. Well, look what that's done in 70 years. It's got everyone nowhere. The sooner that people realize that encouragement and support for resolution is the way to go and stop siding in the conflict and bringing the parties together as opposed to pulling them further apart, that is the day when justice will be served on both Israel and the Palestinians. Let's, let's ask you this. I mean, uh, we're looking at, at an extension of, of this fighting. We're looking at, at possibly Benjamin Netanyahu sending ground troops into Gaza at this stage. I mean, uh, for you, is, is that action that, I that is going to prevent the conflict from going any further no. or, or simply to escalate Surely it? Surely no one wants the, a ground incursion. That's the last thing that anyone could possibly desire or hope for because you know when there's a ground incursion, that's when the fatalities on both sides are going to skyrocket. Again, I come back to the point. Israel, I believe, could not understand why Hamas would not back down. Let's not forget that for four weeks, Benjamin Netanyahu restrained himself almost to the detriment of his coalition government. He did not want to go in. He did not want this engagement. But if your population is suffering the hundreds, in the hundreds, of missiles falling on your head, raining on your head, literally every hour, you have to respond. Ben, Barack Obama seems keen to intervene at this point. W would that actually carry any weight as far as Netanyahu's government is concerned? We have to hope so. We, we, we need to pray and hope that that is going to be a resolution and the prevention of a ground incursion to take these missiles away from Hamas and to remove this backbone of terrorist infrastructure. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is from reading it in the press, they tried to get uh, the president of Egypt, al-Sisi, to intervene and uh, Hamas wouldn't respond to him. Uh, I, I, I'm not privy to the information, but I would assume in the four weeks that Netanyahu was waiting for a de-escalation, I'm sure he was engaging with many, many people to try and achieve what has been achieved in the past, yet to no effect. As we have seen, the missiles have, the number of missiles being fired into Israel have gone higher. I have friends and family in Israel currently, and there are hundreds of South Africans in Israel at the moment, every half hour scurrying for bomb shelters in fear of their lives. Ben, I, I must end with one final question. I mean, you, you, you make a point about, about innocent lives on the ground being lost. What do you feel f for the young Palestinians who are dying the same way? I think it is absolutely deplorable. But it is deplorable because Hamas is firing hundreds of missiles into populations, civilian populations, whether it's men, women or children in Israel. And at the same time, they are firing these missiles within close proximity from houses, from kindergartens, from hospitals, and again, Israel has no choice but to try and stop these missiles flying into their population centers. And therefore, it is con condemnable that Hamas is both attacking civilian populations within Israel and inviting, literally, Israel to respond to prevent these missiles being fired by seeking refuge and using their civilian population, essentially, as cover.
Ben Schwartz, thank you so much for talking to us today. He is, of course, Vice Chairman of the South African Zionist Federation. News that moves. ENCA.com.